Hello, welcome to Wine Angel. This is probably one of the first videos that you'll want to watch. Um, I'm going to do quite a few tastings online, so you'll see these. But this is more of a wine tasting tutorial, really. Um, there aren't any strict rules about what you should follow, but it's basically just wine tasting to focus you, really, on what you're drinking, what things to look for, and to make you appreciate a little bit more, and to help you get the most out of your wine, really. So there are three main sort of guidelines that you should follow. The first is how the wine looks, and that's what we'll start with, number one. So we've got wine here today. We've got Imperial Rioja, and it's a Grand Reserve 1998. It's from Spain, and it's from the region of Rioja. Um, it's quite an old wine. Um, normally I wouldn't be drinking red wine on my summer's day like this, but I'm going to just so I think that you might be able to see it a little bit better on the video. Um, when you actually look at a wine, um, you can tell so much about the age um, with the appearance and um, even though we're not looking at white wine I will just tell you that uh, white wine actually changes in colour you can see more of a lemon colour when it's younger it goes to gold and then more to an amber colour with ageing and with red wine it's uh, quite purple when it's young really fully packed with fruit and as it gets older it's more of a brown colour so these little bits of knowledge um, you will actually be able to see what wine you're drinking and if you take say a minute to actually follow these steps number one two and three and um, firstly with the way it looks you can sort of test yourself really and you can actually cover the label up and try and look at the wine smell the wine and taste the wine and see if you can guess what it is and if you can't as I said bit by bit you'll build up your knowledge and then hopefully you'll be able to and that's what blind wine tasting is all about and we all aspire to be able to do that and taste every wine in the world so let's have a look first. Um, I'll pour some of the wine. Best thing to do is, really, you want less than half a glass, or about a third, really. The bigger the glass, the better. You can actually see more wine and squirt a little bit more. Um, I like to use a very big glass when I'm drinking red wine. You can see it. So basically, you give the wine a little swirl. Do you practice this? Don't spill it everywhere. And um, you can see down the side here, um, legs forming. That's basically where wine actually drips down the inside of the glass. I think years ago, I hope it wasn't just me, but we actually think that this was um, showing me how much the alcohol rate was, or um, well, the content, sorry, and we used to count how many legs there were. This is a complete fallacy, it's not true at all, and really just shows the evaporation rate of the alcohol. So it's just nice to see them, that they're there. Now, some people call them tears, I think it's a bit sad. I think they just stick to legs, really. But anyway, with the, as I mentioned, the white wines before, um, now I'm gonna obviously talk about the colors of the red wine. Um, it's best to use natural light if you can, that's why I'm outside. It's a beautiful day, um, but obviously you can do it inside as well with the natural light coming in, which is much better. Um, and um, basically, if you have a piece of white paper, which I've got here, which you can't see on the video, I'm just holding the wine glass against the paper at an angle. And basically what this allows you to do is it won't pick up any background colours, so you can see the perfect colour of the wine. Now, it's very difficult to show you, I can't know if I can actually show you here on the screen, but with a wine, red or white, but we're using red here, there are two colours involved. One is you get a colour in the core, which is actually the, the centre of the wine, and also then you get a colour on the rim, which is on the edge of the wine. Now with a wine, you will get a graduation of colour from core to rim, and um, this changes with age. And the rim, you can see it's sort of like a clear, well, rim really, a clear, clear line around the outside. And the wider this is, the older the wine. On this one, because this is a 98, um, it's probably about just under a centimetre. It's quite large, actually. So that does prove the age of the wine. And you can compare this with younger wines and older wines just to see that I am telling the truth. Um, and also with the red wines, as I said, they're very, very purple and very packed with fruit as they're younger. But this wine... As you can see, this is quite an old wine, and the colour goes from more of a brick red and gets quite brown around the rim. And when it's brown around the rim, this is again showing its age. The next step in our wine tasting is how the wine actually smells. This in wine terminology is normally called the nose, when people say they can detect strawberries on the nose, literally means they can smell strawberries. So we'll actually stick to the word smell today to make it easier for everybody. But basically, when it comes to wine tasting, any opinion basically is correct. Everything that you think is correct, and especially when it comes to actually smelling the wine, any words that can pop into your mind to describe the smells, or aroma should I say, are correct. Um, you can be smelling fruits, different types of fruits, um, old or new, or tin or fresh. 
you've got vegetables, flowers, um, even strange things like treacle and leather. Um, people describe any word, basically, when it comes to wine, so nothing is right or wrong. So whatever you say is correct, so don't worry about that one. Um, also, little tip, try not to actually wear aftershaves or perfumes if you go to a proper wine tasting. You sometimes can't actually smell your own perfumes. Um, basically, if there's someone next to you, <laughs> you'll be able to smell it because you wouldn't like it and it can actually affect, um, as I said, but only when you're doing a proper wine tasting. The bigger the nose, the better, really. And I don't mean the nose as in the smell, I mean your own nose when you're actually wine tasting. Um, because especially with the larger glasses, you can get your nose a little bit further down to the glass. So, anyway, if you give it a swirl, the oxygen itself, it liberates the wine basically, the oxygen comes into contact with the wine and this allows the aromas to develop a little bit more and you can smell them really. So, also take as many goes as you want because the nose recovers really, really quickly, um, like it's recovered immediately now. So you can just take, I take normally three or four times to smell it. So as there's no rush, take your time as much as you want. You can take a deep, deep, deep smell there. It's absolutely fantastic. Smells of Spain to me. <laughs> but basically, with the Imperial Reserva, uh, Grand Reserva, should I say, it um, smells very meaty um, and caramel like because it's got an oxidative quality. And uh, also, it's very strawberry and plummy, and that's the sort of aromas I'm getting. Uh, but again, anything that you think, anything that you say is correct, so it doesn't really matter at all. Um, at this point as well, that you can you can detect sort of out of condition wines really. So some wines might be corked, and this has got nothing to do with the bits of cork floating in the glass. It's um, literally if there's been a bad cork that's been used. The oxygen gets into the bottle, uh, it affects the wine, and it makes it go bad. Um, and it sort of smells musty and damp. Um, and obviously, if this is the case, then don't drink the wine. Send it back and get another. Um, that's about it really when it comes to the to the smelling. And then we can move on to the wine tasting. Now for the final part of the wine tasting, this is actually to taste the wine itself. This allows us to detect certain flavours on our palate. Um, this is on our tongue. And the tongue in different areas can make you taste different parts of the wine, really. Um, we detect bitterness right at the back of our tongue and then acidity a little bit further forward. And when your wine is very acidic, it can cause your mouth to sort of salivate. It's quite a good indicator. And then on the tip of your tongue is a sweetness indicator. And then tannins. Tannins are from the skins of the grape and they're really quite important in red wine to allow it to age. So as wines are aged, um, the older they are, the less tannins they'll be, they'll be a lot softer as they've been broken down. Um, so hopefully with this wine, we won't taste so many. Um, but it can be quite embarrassing. A lot of people don't like wine tasting. Um, but when you actually go to a proper wine tasting, you'll realise that every single person in the room is pulling a funny face. Um, because what you do is you actually slurp the wine, suck in the wine basically, as though, how can I describe it, as though you're, you're surprised, like a surprised expression on your face. Um, and then this allows oxygen to basically come into contact with the wine, like we discussed before, um, and this can basically allow you to, to, to taste a lot better. Um, and please take it from me, I know a lot of people do swallow the wine, but if you can spit it out, use any vessel that you want really, they'll probably have spittoons there. But if you do, um, just, if you go to a proper wine tasting, um, I, I assured that you will not be able to taste the third or fourth wine as good as the first one you did. You won't be able to judge it as well. So um, the best thing is to do is to spit the wine out so you get the full flavour um, but obviously you don't ingest the alcohol content. So basically we'll have to take the first little bit of taste here. And as I said, I thought the tannins would be quite a lot softer in this. They are softer than a lot of yokers, but you can still taste them. The gums are very dry, and that um, basically depicts that there's quite a lot of tannins in the wine. Um, and as I said, you can, you can taste different areas of your tongue. The longer you keep the wine in there for, the more flavours that can develop. Um, and the different things you can taste, basically the acidity, as if that can make your mouth water. Um, the length, that's how long the flavour of the wine will stay in your mouth for. Um, the longer it is, the bigger the length basically, is that this actually shows a more quality wine. Um, so that's it really, um, when it comes to wine tasting. Enjoy, practice as much as you can. Please do take note of the things that you find or think with the wines. Um, as I said, because you probably will forget the wines. Um, it's not something that I think you will do, we all do it, I do it every time. Um, so as I said, with the iPhone application, you can take a photograph of it or write it down in a nice wine notebook. So remember those three steps, he's looking, smelling, 
and tasting. So enjoy.